Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun. We first landed a spacecraft on it successfully in 1976. Since then, we've sent many other probes and have learned a lot about the red planet. Mars has turned out to be a rocky desert. Even though it's much smaller than the Earth, it has some very dramatic terrain. This is Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in the solar system. It's about the same size as the state of Arizona. Mars also has the largest canyon in the entire solar system. This is the Mariner Valley, or Valles Marineris. This enormous rift valley is as long as the continental United States. It's over nine times as long as the Grand Canyon, about seven times as wide, and four times as deep. It's almost as deep as Mount Everest is high. Mars is probably the planet that's in the news most often. You've probably heard about all this evidence for water on Mars that keeps getting discovered. Some evolutionists even say large parts of Mars used to be flooded with water, maybe even the whole planet. Let's talk about that for a moment. Many formations on Mars look like they were formed by liquid water. There are chasms, gullies, layer deposits, shorelines, and other formations that flowing water can produce. There's also evidence for water geysers and other dramatic events. But Mars is a giant desert today. Sometimes it has dust storms that cover the entire planet. How could there have been flooding on Mars? Mars does actually have water on it today, but not in liquid form. For example, there's water vapor in the atmosphere. More importantly, Mars has a lot of water ice at the poles. Water is also frozen under the surface elsewhere on the planet. This would seem to be the source of at least some of the formations we've seen. For example, a volcano or some other event that heats up the surface sufficiently could melt the ice frozen into the surface and cause flooding. But how long could this liquid water last on the surface? Under current conditions, it can't last long at all. That's why Mars is so dry today. Mars has a very thin atmosphere. This means the boiling point of water is very low. Even though it's very cold on Mars, a puddle of water would evaporate away quickly. Despite all this, Evolutionists speculate that Mars used to have huge oceans of liquid water, which lasted for hundreds of millions of years. Why? Because they want to find life on other planets, and they need liquid water to do it. They seem to think that finding life somewhere besides Earth would prove evolution. Well, that's absurd in multiple ways. First of all, water doesn't mean life. You need water for life, but you also need lots of other things, especially an intelligent designer who can create it all. Louis Pasteur already proved that life can't arise from non-living chemicals, and that was over 150 years ago. Evolutionists need to update their scientific approach. Even if we did find life on other planets, that wouldn't prove evolution anyway. Evolution can't explain how life arose at all, anywhere. For example, one evolutionist wrote this. More than 30 years of experimentation on the origin of life in the fields of chemical and molecular evolution have led to a better perception of the immensity of the problem of the origin of life on Earth, rather than to its solution. At present, all discussion on principal theories and experiments in the field either end in stalemate or in a confession of ignorance. Another evolutionist admitted this, it is extremely improbable that proteins and nucleic acids, both of which are structurally complex, and both of which are required for life by the way, arose spontaneously in the same place at the same time. Yet it also seems impossible to have one without the other. And so, at first glance, one might have to conclude that life could never, in fact, have originated by chemical means. I could give lots of other examples, but we don't have the time. My point is that evolution can't explain how life could have started without a creator. Yet evolutionists are always looking for life somewhere else, as if that would help them solve this problem. But finding life somewhere else would just increase the number of places where evolution can't explain it. Anyway, that's one of the main reasons evolutionists want to find evidence for water on Mars. Unfortunately for them, as I mentioned before, liquid water is impossible on Mars today. But evolutionists want a history of water there really, really badly. This creates a huge problem. And where there's a problem, you need a solution. Evolutionists believe that Mars used to have a thick atmosphere, like they want. But then an asteroid hit the planet and stripped it away. 
Let's think about this for a moment. Mars is a desert planet where it's physically impossible to have water. But evolutionists desperately want water there. In fact, they want enough water to flood the whole planet. So they invoke this catastrophe for which there's no evidence. On the other hand, the Earth has lots of water, more than enough to drown the entire planet a mile and a half deep. And the Bible confirms that all the land was underwater at the time of Noah's flood. Plus, there's lots of physical evidence for a global flood on our planet. But evolutionists mock us for accepting the biblical account. They say that believing in a catastrophe is unscientific. Do you see the hypocrisy here? This is a vital point. In this video, you'll see that evolutionists invoke catastrophes over and over again to fill the gaps in their models. And to be fair, it's possible that catastrophes have played a role in shaping the planets and moons in our solar system. After all, the Bible doesn't tell us much about the history of these objects, so we can't be dogmatic about what did or didn't happen to them in the past. Nevertheless, there's usually little evidence for any of the collisions invoked by the evolutionists. In the history of the entire solar system, there's only one catastrophe that we know for sure occurred, a global flood here on Earth. And this one catastrophe, the only one with overwhelming evidence from geology, history, and the Word of God itself, this catastrophe, the evolutionists reject absolutely. That's why in this video I'm emphasizing how often the evolutionists use asteroid collisions to rescue their models from the facts. Again and again, they invoke speculative catastrophes all over the solar system, but then they ridicule creationary scientists for using a well-supported catastrophe to interpret geological formations on Earth. And Mars is a perfect example of this inconsistency. Evolutionists are demanding watery catastrophes on Mars, where there can be no water today. Yet they mock creationists for believing in a watery catastrophe on Earth, which is covered with water today. As I said, this is utter hypocrisy. Mars is also an excellent illustration of the rank speculation that is passed off as science today. For example, perhaps the preeminent scientific journal in the world today is Nature. Nature recently ran an article with this headline, Wheel of Spirit Hints at Life on Mars. The spirit being referred to here is a small rover that we landed on Mars. So if all you saw was this headline, you'd think, wow, Spirit found evidence for life on Mars. But what exactly did Spirit find? Only a little patch of sandy material, which might be silica, which might have formed from a volcanic fumarole. And on Earth, volcanic fumaroles sometimes have bacteria in them. Bingo, we found evidence for life on Mars. Isn't this absurd? A patch of sand somehow becomes hints of life on Mars. If a creationary scientist said something half this silly, he'd be mocked and ridiculed. But evolutionary believers do this sort of thing all the time. They often come up with wild speculations, which are presented as scientific fact. Remember this the next time you hear a news story about evidence for water, or even life, on Mars, or about all the evidence we have for evolution here on Earth. Try to find out what the evidence really is. It's often a lot less persuasive than they say. So here's what you aren't being told about Mars. Evolutionists want a long history of global oceans on Mars, but it's physically impossible for liquid water to exist on Mars today. The evolutionist view of Mars reveals the hypocrisy of their approach. And Mars is a good example of the wild evolutionary speculations that are passed off as science today.